Hi, welcome back to another session of Q&A with Dr. K. The question today is, what do I have to say about long-term vegans who get diagnosed with cancer? Well, that's certainly a confusing and heartbreaking diagnosis for anyone to get, especially people trying to look after their health with a whole food plant-based diet. So how can one make sense of it? Well, as a physician, I have not only respect, but great awe for the human body and the stunning amount of cell division that is happening in the body as we speak. Do you know that every second your bone marrow is putting red blood cells out into your circulation at the rate of 2 million cells a second? And of course, at the same time, your liver and spleen are taking out 2 million red cells that are getting all banged up and, and aged. Uh, 2 million red cells a second. A stunning amount of cell division requiring trillions of, of enzymatic reactions and RNA duplication, just a stunning amount of cellular clockwork going on. And that's just in the bone marrow, your intestinal lining, uh, 30 feet of intestinal uh, membranes. Uh, the very surface membranes are constantly renewing themselves. You grow a new intestinal membrane every three to six days. Think of the trillions of cells that have to die, be uh, replaced by more cell division. You know, when you think of this tremendously complex clockwork of cellular reactions happening, it's amazing. Most of us uh, don't get cancers. There isn't a far greater incidence of leukemia and, and bowel cancers because we live in a sea of carcinogens. Uh, the fact is that uh, there's carcinogenic molecules uh, everywhere. We breathe in auto exhaust. There are heavy metals in the water we drink. There's pesticides in the food. Uh, a friend of mine uh, died of lung cancer. He grew up in a house where there was radon gas uh, coming from uh, the basement. Uh, it's amazing. Most of us don't get more cancers. And so uh, that's and probably an initiating factor. Uh, and then there's uh, the state of cancer resistance in our own body. Uh, a friend of mine was recently diagnosed lung cancer. Uh, maybe 20 years ago, uh, she was much heavier. Uh, maybe she was out for a bike ride and she uh, uh, rode through a plume of diesel or exhaust or bus exhaust and inhaled in uh, the carcinogens uh, that set off some early cancerous changes in, in one of the lung lining cells. And for the last 20 years, it's been slowly percolating and growing. And again, her previous obesity uh, and sugar eating probably fanned the growth of that but it was microscopic. It often takes years and years before cell divisions accumulate enough where the cancer even becomes visible. And then by that time, she'd become plant-based. Uh, and now the spot shows up on the, on the scan or the chest x-ray. Oh, I'm a vegan who got cancer. But really, uh, again, uh, who was that person all through their lives? And the fact that things showed up now, as I mentioned, you know, some little carcinogenic uh, incident could have happened years before, and now it's finally visible. It's not that she developed this cancer yesterday. Uh, so what to do about it? Well, of course, a whole food plant-based diet is, still remains the best strategy. Why? Uh, for many reasons. Uh, certainly, there are uh, anti-cancer properties in the foods, and I would really recommend uh, go to the website of Dr. Joel Furman at drfurman.com, get his recipe for anti-cancer soup and follow his G-bomb recommendation uh, because the uh, the greens and the berries and the onions and the, uh, uh, and the uh, mushrooms uh, and the nuts and seeds all have anti-cancer properties. That lovely anti-cancer soup floods the tissues with green vegetables on a daily basis. That makes sense but also because of the naturally lower protein in a whole food plant-based diet, you're not stimulate the body to put out uh, uh, this powerful growth hormone, uh, insulin-like growth factor one, which would fan cancers throughout the body. So no matter how you look at it, even though if there is a small cancer growing, uh, there is a, uh, there's a good chance you can slow things down uh, with a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, and uh, 
And fasting has uh, a role to play. That's probably another video, but it's been shown that going in on day two or three of a water fast, if you're going to get chemotherapy or radiation, potentiates uh, the action of the chemotherapy agents. So that's a way that nutrition could also be used to help overcome this disease. So, uh, so vegans are not immune to cancers. Uh, our lovely friends, uh, uh, vegan friends, Patty Brightman, Carol um, Adams, and and uh, Ginny Messina wrote this wonderful book, Even Vegans Die. And it's true. You know, the mortality rate of people watching this video is 100%. No, nobody should get out of here alive. You know, all our, number, all our days have numbers on them. Uh, and uh, we need to take that into effect. That's a blessing. Uh, take that into account. Uh, because uh, again, we all are on this planet for a very short time, and some of us are going to leave uh, in an accident, some will leave uh, in old age, some will leave uh, with a, a stroke, and some of us are going to leave through cancers. Uh, and uh, the, the means are almost irrelevant. The question is, what are you going to do with your limited number of days on this planet? I think when we leave this earth, we're going to be asked one question. You, had a, you were given a human heart and time on this planet. What'd you do with them? You know, how much did you love? And that's really the only matter here. And so, uh, again, uh, there's no ironclad guarantee that you're never going to get cancer or, uh, or some uh, fatal disease uh, just because you're plant-based. You'll have done a lot of good by the animals that you spared, the example of gentleness that you set, and the love that you gave. You know, that's really the name of the game here. But don't feel ripped off if you do get a cancer diagnosis. Optimize uh, the health of your tissues to resist and slow down that growth. Uh, work possibly using fasting to optimize any therapy you may getting you may be getting, and uh, and let it be a lesson to all of us to use these precious days to get as much love and service and laughter and and goodwill to make this as great a planet as we possibly can for the people coming after us and the animals with whom we share this planet. So that's my thought about cancer, better avoided than uh, than contracted, but uh, it does happen due to the lives we live, the bodies that we have, the carcinogens we're exposed to, the, career, this, the conditions we create in our body. You do the best you can. Uh, we're not immune to it, um, but uh, with a proper approach, it can be uh, a catalyst to uh, to get even more love in our life. So uh, do the best you can with it. And that's my thoughts about vegans and cancers.